Welcome to the CFO Show. I'm your host, Melissa Howitson, CFO of Vena Solutions. And I'm Tom Sigmiller, VP of FP&A here at Vena. How's it going today, Melissa? Today is a good day, Tom. Can't complain. Weather is nice and uh, very productive. So, Melissa, we're here on a really important topic today. That's fostering board relationships. One of the things that we want to make sure we always get right is making sure we have productive board meetings. How do you go about prepping when you're getting ready for one? Really, you know, I think for me, there's three things that are key. I think the first one is reflecting on the business, taking the time to think about what's gone well or what hasn't, and where are you going and where are you going to be spending your time? I think the next one is aligning with your board in advance. There should not really be major surprises happening at the board table. And I think you want to make sure that the agenda that you're crafting, you get feedback early from them to know that you're on the right track so that you're lining things up for success. And third is alignment with the ELT and the advanced prep that you do. Getting together and working on what are your key messages that you want to get across in the board meeting? What are the discussions you want to have with that board or the advice that you want to get out of the meeting? You know that sometimes it can go off track because you can get into just creation of slideware. Lots of number, lots of data, lots of slides and lose your way in terms of the so what are you trying to get across. As soon as you have 200 slides, you know you're off track and you're not going to have a focused discussion that's going to be pointing out the main key items. And so just checking yourself against the what do we hope to accomplish and making sure that as you're preparing, you're actually hitting the mark there. Yeah, it makes sense. It's, it really comes down to, I think, what you said about relationship management and and making sure all parties are effectively getting what they want and they need out of that conversation, whether it's ELT members, board members, your CEO. It's how do you navigate that uh, that day, that outing, to make sure it's most productive and impactful for all the parties there. Melissa, you joined Ven about a year ago as a new CFO, so relatively new in the seat. How do you typically go about building out those board and CEO relationships? Well, in the case of Ven, it was really easy because my very first day on the job was a board meeting. So <laughs> it was an accelerated building of relationships, which, you know, all joking aside, was actually really great because it was in person. I got to start fostering those relationships, both with the board members as well as the executive team, see how the dynamic works and, and really understand what that culture of the board was like. I think from there, I certainly went about, I had one-on-ones with the various board members to understand what they were looking for, what was important to them. Um, the other thing I did was really a lot of listening across the executive team, understanding where they're at, building those relationships. I embraced every opportunity that I could to be in person with people just because I find you can really kickstart that building of relationships when you have those opportunities. Um, and I think the other was being transparent with my CEO as we were going and asking questions. So if I was seeing things, sharing my observations, but also understanding some of the history or the things that I didn't know, like why do we present these materials to the board or it, why has this historically been important to really understand where you're starting from so that you can continue and build upon that uh, rather than just starting out fresh. And how open and transparent do you find people typically are, whether it's a CEO or a board member in terms of where you're at and where you're looking to go? So I think typically a board is quite transparent. There's, you know, they usually have very set ideas about what it is they want the CFO to be able to contribute to or where the business is going. Those would have been discussed in prior board meetings. CEO, similarly transparent. As you're building out the relationships with some of the other execs, there's always a sense of CFO, it's finance, are they going to be here to cut my budgets or, you know, find all the things that are wrong with the business. And, and so I think you have to be really careful as you're treading into these relationships to really build out the relationship and come from a place where you assume there's been positive in intent and really just understanding where you can help without just diving in too hard and sort of shutting the team down and not wanting to be as transparent with you. Yeah, building that relationship before you go too deep and too fast certainly is a, a fine balancing act that we've got to uh, navigate. Absolutely. 
So clearly we have a really interesting topic here today. Uh, we wanted to bring in a guest that sat both in a CEO seat as well as in a board member's seat. We think that when we combine this with Melissa's expertise as a CFO, we're going to have a really compelling conversation to help navigate this relationship and really understand how we build out that bond or that form between the CEO, the CFO, and the board of directors. Joining us for that conversation is Kim Eaton, former CEO of Aptian, a sitting board member at nine different organizations, and managing director at Vista Equity Partners. Kim, thanks so much for joining us here today. Absolutely. Very excited to be with you all. Really thrilled to have you, Kim. So the role of the CFO is evolving, and increasingly it requires constructing a bridge between the CEO, CFO, and the board. And when I think about what the responsibilities are of the board in terms of providing oversight and governance for the company, wondering what your thoughts are on the role of the CFO in helping to foster and, and build those connections. So I think you're absolutely right that the board responsibility, um, you know, it's pretty broad. And one of the ways that I think boards look at their role is to ensure that business strategy is sound and that it has the proper financial and operational assumptions supporting it. And so I think that allows the CFO role to be super crucial and as well as their teams um, in being key partners to the business. And I think that that actually helps build cohesion between the board and the management team by the CFO playing that role, identifying challenges um, and, and, and really um, driving tough questions, you know, into the mix to challenge assumptions that the operation um, has made. Um, I think while it probably isn't a fair thing to think that a CFO can bring fully an outside perspective because they are in the business, but I think they do bring a very important outside perspective to decision-making, you know, to challenging actions. And really boards want to see this happen. So that's how I think the cohesion is created. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a fine line, um, but it's an important one. And I think it's um, in bridging between the CFO and the, the board, but also between the CEO and management team and, and board. Yeah, no, that's, that's really great insight. And do you have any suggestions for the CFO in ways to do that challenging, like you talked about, but to do it well? The current environment um, of the company, or I should say the type of company, whether it's a, it's a much larger company, a smaller company, you know, what its profile is in terms of growth versus, um, you know, balanced growth and profitability, um, as well as if the company is highly acquisitive or if it's more organically growth fo focused. I think all those things have to be taken into consideration, um, it, you know, as well in terms of um, probably absorbing the answer to my question. I think First of all, as would be expected, you know, a respectful acknowledgement of, you know, maybe where the company is and with respect to that, um, but asking very logical questions, you know, asking um, and challenging, I would say, assumptions into input. Um, I And I, I really think the how is more about the trust that's been built with the team and the relationships that have been built. So I always go back to that to say, focus on building relationships, focus on, you know, allowing for people to feel comfortable and vulnerable to share where they might feel exposed or might feel like their assumptions aren't quite right um, to then ask for help. Right. So sometimes it isn't actually pushed from the CFO. It's actually pulled from the functional teams and the management team members. I love that how you talk about that importance of building that trust and the how, because I've experienced that where if it's a if it's approached the wrong way, people can shut down pretty quickly and finance can become the place that you don't want to pull into the conversation out of fear of what the ramifications will be. So I think that's really great advice, Kim. CFOs, CEO, and board members all have to often have unique and differing perspectives based on their points of view around company strategy, long-term plans, product plans, go-to-market plans. Ultimately, what do you think the role of this CFO is in bringing together these unique perspectives 
in ultimately being able to drive a, a productive and useful board meeting. Focusing on really building trust um, between the board and the management team and the CEO. Um, and, and that's actually all um, put into the effort to prepare for the board meeting. And I think one thing that is really important to remember, and I kind of have a set of philosophies around uh, how to prepare and how to think about the board meeting. And I think the biggest thing is um, don't come forced to try to show everything that's going that's that's great or, you know, because we all know that not everything is in green status, <laughs> right? Everything um, that is in green should be acknowledged and should um, be shared in the board meeting so that the board actually understands thought process, um, the actions that were taken, the follow through, the, the process for, I would call recovery, if maybe something was red and turned to green. But the main focus for the board meeting is to actually set yourself up to have very constructive strategic discussions and open, transparent discussions. And so that means that everyone really needs to participate and share their perspective. So I think the CFO, because of that business partnership you know, that they're set up to have, actually understands the different components of the business, can really play a role in facilitating that. You know, I think the CFO has a chance to understand that if the services, you know, leadership feels strained by the go to market strategy um, and that is a you know part of the discussion that they can actually ensure that their voices are heard and that that is brought to the table to, you know, frankly, the most productive board meetings are when the board can actually share wisdom, share experience, help look around corners help create connections for people. And the only way to do that is to actually have that dialogue and truly understand kind of what's behind the why of, of what the company might be might be facing or might be struggling with. Um, and then I think while I know I kind of emphasize don't focus on the green, I think where there are opportunities um, to celebrate successes, like that's really what the board is for, and you know, too. So definitely make sure that those are brought forward um, because what those learnings are are probably shared with other boards um, and other, you know, other companies um, in, in that type of role. Um, I think the, the last thing I'll mention on this, and certainly ask additional questions, but I also think it's important to to acknowledge the things that you don't know in a board setting like that and um, follow up, um, show a little bit of vulnerability. You know, I think it's important everybody's prepared and that they know their material and that they know the business. Really, at the end, it's knowing the business. Um, but sometimes there are just things that don't, you know, don't resonate or maybe you haven't looked at in the same way that um, that the question is being asked. So don't feel um constrained by that, actually look as, as an opportunity actually to follow up with the board or to follow up with a specific board member. Kim, do you feel that that's a, a challenge or a mistake that many first-time CFOs or CEOs have in, in ultimately interacting with boards, either painting the world as, as too rosy or being negative and not ultimately finding that right balance? Yes, I would say that is true. I think that you know, I think a lot of times CFOs kind of perceive that their roles are to find all of the things that are wrong in a business. Um, it isn't necessarily true, but in some situations, maybe that is why, um, you know, the CFO is is um, where they are. Um, and I would argue that most boards are really looking for the balance, um, most definitely. And I think I think there's actually an opportunity for the CFO to ensure that they bring others into the conversation and, and provide perspective so that it doesn't force them to feel like they have to be the ones to just always expose either the positive or the negative. Um, just ensure that there are other perspectives that are shared. And I mean that by on the team, right? So Melissa in a board meeting, bringing you, Tom, into a conversation, I think, helps provide a lot of um, additional perspectives and additional thoughts to be shared. Inevitably, there will sometimes be conflict or differing opinions on things. 
What advice do you have for CEOs on how to navigate when there's divergent opinions or perspectives and how to do that in a way that still fosters a positive outcome? There might be disagreements, but I think in many respects, there's probably more misunderstandings. Um, So where a lot of those misunderstandings come from are people having a contextual experience that says, oh, I think they're coming at it from this way when actually the CEO or the management team may be coming at it from a different angle. So, you know, ensuring that there's actually a grounding on what you're actually talking about and making sure that um, people are actually heard and, and, and understood. Um, I like to talk a lot about how important it is that um, you're in person for, for board meetings, for example, and, I think just being together, you you can kind of tell when maybe you aren't talking the same language. And so then it it just allows for that to be identified, that there is potentially a misunderstanding. I also think that it's important to draw out if there is um, a differing opinion um, in a forum where you can kind of help the entire board and management team see that it's okay to challenge each other. You know, I think that as we talked about before, that's the, I think what everyone fears in the dialogue, but when you can actually very constructively have the conversation and maybe you end up taking it offline and you have a follow-up meeting, but it's a really important kind of learning process um, to one, ensure alignment, but to two, to show that you can actually work through problems and solve them together. How important are those other meetings? And I'm going to call out specifically the regular recurring meetings that you'd have with your CFO or the pre-board meeting dinner, as an example? What happens in those venues and how does it ultimately change the relationship? I think as we talked about, you know, where there might be um, opportunities to follow up, where someone asked a question and, you know, there's an opportunity to share perspective or details, you know, absolutely grab that moment and use it as an opportunity and, you know, get to know each other you know, um, I think from my perspective as a board member, it not only allows me to get to know that person um, on a personal level, but I get to learn more about their thought process, you know, understand um, maybe a little bit more about what they are focused on and where I could potentially help. So those are all relationship building, you know, moments, really. Um, I think the other is, you um, especially around strategic topics that might be, you know, in front of you, um, having the opportunity or even suggesting or asking to have maybe a series of meetings to work through those topics together, share ideas, you know, bring others into the conversation. Again, another way to really help also bring perspective to the board members, right? So a, a big part of what I think where people are uneasy is that they don't know each other and they perceive how they're going to be judged. And so if you can actually have a conversation ahead of time, it just makes those, you know, tougher situations much easier to deal with in a board setting. Um, And then finally, I know the board dinner, um, you know, when I was the CEO of, of a couple of companies, I used to challenge the management team to sit next to a board member that they hadn't spent much time with. And, um, and I would, you know, I would, I would absolutely monitor that. (laughs) And, and every single time people did it, they were always nervous about it. They came back just saying, oh, what a great individual this is. And did you know this about that individual? And, you know, um, oh, by the way, they thought I meant this in the last board meeting, but, but I explained to them that it was actually very different. So I, I think that, um, using the board dinner, um, to just feel relaxed and get to know people on a personal level is such a great opportunity, especially being in person, right? It's very different. We do so much over Zoom or, you know, Teams or whatever we use. Um, And so those moments are precious, really. And Kim, you've talked a, a couple of times on the importance of bringing others into the conversation. And so a question actually that I have for yourself, Tom, is how do you in your position where you may not be in all the board meetings, how do you foster those relationships with the board or what's worked for you? Sure. So 
I try to approach it always from the perspective of being uh, interested, engaged, and curious. So try to understand what would somebody want to hear or understand if they were sitting on the other side of the table from me, um, what worries them, what interests them, and where are maybe some areas that we can gather some insight. So are there areas where we could use a sounding board as an organization. And we think we have an approach, but we actually have some really, really experienced folks sitting on the other side of the table. I try to view it ultimately as a missed opportunity. Should we not ask those questions or share that context? And, and ideally in a balanced fashion, as, as Kim alluded to previously. Excellent. Yeah. You, and you do a great job in helping to round out and, and keep nurturing those relationships, which is, you know, it really is the whole management team and there's different play, ways that different people can play in that. So another question for you, Kim, what are some of the behaviors you've seen in some of the strongest CFOs that you've worked with when it comes to dealing with fostering those board relationships? Probably some of the best um, behaviors is are where it is clear that that individual and their team, so not just, but it, it's like role modeled and pushed down, um, is where they're positioned with the leadership team as a sounding board. And they know that they can actually go and have an open, healthy dialogue and, and ask to be challenged. Um, and I mentioned that before. And I think, um, again, those are, those are situations that are built off trust. They're built off of, you know, a sincere willingness to help, not you know, oh, we are all working in silos, but we actually are a team. And so it, it's a, it's an interesting thing. I've had a lot of CFOs that show up and use I all the time. And those that use we are the ones that exhibit this behavior most, I would say. I mean, it, it might, might not be fair to characterize it entirely <laughs> that way, but I definitely see a trend, you know, around that. I also think that they are, they are, people and teams that actually stay very current with what's happening cross-functionally in the business. And um, again, the role of, you know, the strategic finance function to be a business partner, um, really understanding and then bringing back, you know, to the CFO and CEO observations. And it's not because two months have passed and there's an observation, but they've actually been in the business, um, you know, along the way. I think the other one is they have a very high EQ. You know, there's someone who recognizes when people feel maybe overwhelmed or they feel backed into a corner or they feel like they have to do something that maybe doesn't feel right. And I think the CFO being able to identify that and kind of helping people feel comfortable, it's just a hugely positive characteristic. And then I think the the, the last two that I would mention are... Um, they're good at an inspection. And, you know, I not everyone really understands what inspection actually means, but it means going deep enough into something to truly make sure that the, the decisions and the actions actually match. Um, you know, a lot of times, as I think we know, we can we can look at data all day long and we can actually make it tell us what we think we want it to tell us. <laughs> but actually being able to validate, inspect and, um, you know, understand what the data and our analysis is, is telling us um, is a is a somewhat rare um, characteristic. I think those are definitely some some good suggestions. And, and that list I, I know would all hold true in terms of what a CEO would think of in terms of what makes a good CFO. Is there anything else you would add in terms of what a CEO might be also looking for in a CFO, or is it really the same list? I think it's the same, but I also think um, maybe an additional one is being able to um, go deep and, and you know, get right in the thick of it with everyone, but actually being able to kind of pull back and empower and trust their team to do that work. And therefore, the CFO can become much more of a strategic partner to the CEO, right? Because they're not always in it. They're actually able to step back and leverage the team that is, that is you know, in it day to day um, to, to help think through um, those decisions um, in the business. So I think that's, that's one. I think the other one I would say is, um, you know, 
having having the willingness um, to challenge the CEO directly, you know, and um, having that relationship. So again, going back to the trust and and relationship, but um, you know, I think there are many CEO CFO relationships where the CEO I think just wants the CFO to validate for them you know, what they believe. And so I think, you know, at the end of the day, the CEO does want that partner that is challenging them um, to make sure that they are, they're focused on the right things. Yeah. That, that partnership is, is so incredibly key. So thank you so much, Kim. We've gotten such great advice from you. We do typically have a few rapid fire questions uh, that we'd like to ask you. We ask all of our guests. So if you're ready, I'd like to pose those to you. Sure. Go for it. <laughs> All right. So what is the best piece of business advice that you've received in your career? Probably about midway into my career, um, I had a, an individual that I worked for who um, basically told me that I should continue to be um, who I was in terms of my personality and um, that, you know, being kind, being empathetic, um, being a good listener was actually worthy and important in leadership. And I think if I hadn't had that reinforcement at that particular time and that kind of pivot in my career, um, I probably wouldn't ended up, wouldn't have ended up, you know, where I am. So I think I, you know, I definitely have a different style and they encouraged me to use it not to hide from it. And I think that was, um, you know, really important for me. Thank you so much for sharing that one. And the other one is what is something that you do in your personal life that helps you show up the best person that you can be in your work life? This one's easy. I run. (laughs) (laughs) Run away from things. I'm not running away. (laughs) Um, but I, I do, and I know, you know, when I need to go kind of have that release, but I, I've developed a habit to do that as many mornings as I can. I don't do it every day, but, you know, I try to get that in and make sure that I have a clear head, especially on those tougher days, um, helps me a lot. Thank you so much for sharing with us today, Kim. And thank you, Tom, my co-host, for helping out as always. Well, that does it for today's episode of The CFO Show. And if you'd like more information, please follow the links in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen to or watch your podcast because you don't want to miss an episode. For The CFO Show, I'm Melissa Howitson. Until next time.